Hello YouTube friends, the CryptoCran gang here with a brand new video that's all about the Antminer's web-based management interface. You know, this thing. The Antminer web interface is your one-stop source for all the information you could ever need about your miner's performance. Everything from how long it's been running, to how well it's performing, to, and some might say most importantly, how much work it has actually submitted to a mining pool. But, before we get there, let's quickly go over, well, how to get there. In order to access an Antminer's web interface, you need to know what IP address it was assigned. By default, each Antminer is configured to get a dynamic IP address from your router as soon as it's powered on. Now here's where things get interesting. Finding the miner's IP address is a relatively simple process, but it's also a process that's different from one router manufacturer to the next. One common alternative is to simply use an IP scanner from another computer on the same network. Matter of fact, I think we covered this already. To reach the web interface, you must first identify the IP address that was assigned to the S9 by your router. To find the IP, you can either log into your router directly and view the list of connected devices, or you can use one of several free network scanning tools, such as this tool called Advanced IP Scanner. There are dozens of different network scanning apps available, and some are even available from your phone. I've linked to the one that I've used in the description for reference. After the utility has finished scanning your network, it will show you a list of all the devices it found. Look for the one called Antminer and note the IP address. There we go. So once you find the IP address, throw it in your browser's address bar after the HTTP colon slash slash and hit enter. And as for login information, the default ID and password for an Antminer is root, login, and voila, the all-seeing, all-knowing, all-powerful Miner web interface. Quick side note, if the browser you're using acts like you've entered the wrong password, it's likely just a problem with the browser. We've seen this issue plenty of times before, and the easy fix is to either simply clear your browser's cache or use a different web browser entirely. Now then, the Miner interface page has four main sections at the very top. System, Miner configuration, Miner status, and network. Of these four, the system section has the most resources by far. Matter of fact, when you log in, you'll automatically be taken to the overview tab in this section. From here, you can see a number of details about the miner, including the miner type, the firmware version it's running, aka logic version or hardware version, and how long it's been running, or uptime. You'll also be able to see some network-specific information at the very bottom, which is handy if you ever experience any connectivity issues. Next up is the Administration tab. This is pretty self-explanatory, as you can see. The Administration tab is where you can change the login password needed to access the miner's web interface. Neat! After that, we have Monitor, which provides a system log-style breakdown of everything the miner's done since it's been powered on. Now, most of us are going to take one look at this stuff and be all... Doesn't look like anything to me. But the good news is, you likely won't have much need for this section unless something really goes wrong. Same goes for the next section, the kernel log section. Here's the most important thing you'll potentially use the kernel log for. If your miner isn't working properly, click on the kernel log tab, scroll all the way to the bottom, and look for a line that says CRC error count equals and then some number. Basically, unless it says zero, that means something inside the miner isn't working properly. Hopefully that something can be fixed with a factory reset, but often it means there's a hardware failure and you'll likely end up needing to replace either the controlling board or at least one of the hashing boards. But we'll save that can of worms for another day. Speaking of factory resets, next up is the upgrade tab. Curiously named, the Upgrade tab will likely be used for one of two reasons. To perform a factory reset on the miner, or to flash new or different firmware to the miner. The first option is pretty simple. In the Backup slash Restore section at the very top, just click the Perform Reset button to the right of Reset to Defaults, and you're good! As for the Flash New Firmware section, You'd use that tool if you wanted to wipe the firmware that a miner uses to run and replace it with different firmware altogether. Another quick note, flashing new firmware usually causes the miner to get a new IP address from your router. Shameless self-promotion time. Does this whole flashing firmware business sound complicated? 
not to worry. Keep an eye out for another video that walks you through the entire firmware flashing process. And the last tab in the system section is Reboot. Three guesses what that one does. Go on, guess. I'll wait. And that's it for the system section. Let's move on to the next section, Minor Configuration. The Minor Configuration section has only one tab called General Settings. Here is where you'll input the mining pool information you want to use. You can choose up to three different pools to mine for. Why only three? I don't know. I guess because someone at Bitmain decided that three shall be the number of the pools to mine to, and the number of the pools to mine to shall be three. Five is right out. Speaking of, many people wonder how exactly the work is split between these three pools. Actually, it isn't. Work is only submitted to the first pool that responds. The other pools are just there for failover purposes. If pool one is offline, pool two automatically jumps in. Same goes if pool one and pool two are offline. Then it's pool three to the rescue. That way you aren't losing mining time if your primary pool, or pools, are undergoing maintenance. Similarly titled, the next section is Minor Status. Again, only one section, though arguably it's the most useful section in the whole interface. Here's just a snapshot of the info you can find here. Deep breath. Runtime elapsed. Hashing rate, both current and average. Pool mining status. Individual hashing board details, including hashing rate, temperature, number of hardware failures, and the ASIC status. O's are good, X's are bad. Dashes mean the chip isn't responding at all, which is also bad. Fan speeds. And of course, how much work you've actually submitted to your pool. If there's an issue with your miner, this would be the first place to go, as the miner status section provides a nice cross sample of information about several different areas of the miner. More shameless self promotion time! We also have a basic troubleshooting video coming out soon. What fun! Quick aside many people don't realize this, but your pool doesn't actually know exactly how fast your miner is in terms of hashes per second. To get an estimate, it compares the amount of work submitted from your miner against the work submitted by every other miner in the same pool. So don't be surprised if your pool shows large fluctuations from minute to minute. It's best to focus on average speed over time as the best indicator of how your miner is actually performing. Last but not least is the network section, which includes two tabs, one called Settings and the other Diagnostics. The Settings tab allows you to review and or manually input network information on your miner. Normally this information would automatically be parsed out when you connect the miner to your network, so don't feel like you have to manually input this info. In fact, it's really easy to mess this up and lose access to the miner entirely, and the only fix is to perform a manual factory reset. So unless it's absolutely necessary, best to just leave this section alone. And as for diagnostics, this tab allows you to test your network connection three different ways. The first is with ping. Ping is pretty straightforward. It will tell you if there's a connection between your miner and the pool or website you're mining for. The second is called traceroute. Traceroute is a tad more advanced. It allows you to ping every single hop between you and the final destination, i.e. the pool. A good analogy for this feature is getting directions to a destination. Ping will tell you how long it takes to get from start to finish, while Traceroute will do the same and identify how long it takes to get from point A to point B to point C, etc, 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 all the way to the end. Last is NSLOOKUP, which stands for Name Server Lookup. The function of this tool is to basically answer the question of, does this website correspond with an IP address? Now that I've put forth the time and effort to explain all three of those features, I'm going to counterintuitively admit that the last two, Traceroute and NSLOOKUP, are largely superfluous, and chances are good you'll never, ever actually need them. But hey, at least you know what they're for. One final note that applies to several of the various sections and tabs you've seen. Anytime you have the option to change something, there will be a small pair of buttons somewhere on the page that say Reset and Save and Apply. If you do make changes and you, you know, actually want them to be of use, do yourself a favor and be sure to click Save and Apply. I know, I know, seems obvious, right? Well, we've adopted a better safe than sorry approach with these videos, especially as it concerns calling out what seems like blindingly obvious steps. Like click Save if you actually want your changes to be saved, for example. 
because we all know someone that routinely puts food in the microwave and enters a cook time, but fails to push start and wonders why in the world their burrito is still frozen. Good? Good. And that's a wrap on the Antminer Interface Overview. Any questions or feedback, be sure to leave us a note in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and of course, if you haven't already, be sure to give our page a follow, as we have new videos coming out all the time.